Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, California Weather Watch. Today is September 15th, and right now we are looking at the infrared satellite imagery. And by the way, I'm a little bit under the weather here, but I think I'm going to be okay to struggle through the video here today. But anyway, taking a look at Mario down there, you can see it does still have some deep convection technically right now. It is a tropical storm, and some of this moisture is going to spread up towards California over the next few days, perhaps arriving as early as tomorrow afternoon across some of Baja, maybe across some of the higher train of Southern California. Then eventually that moisture will stream northward as we go through the next few days probably peaking on thursday night in through friday morning we'll look at those details we'll look at the extended forecast as always as well as we go through the video here this morning so uh, National Weather Service Las Vegas is all over it. Here comes Mario, and you can see it is bringing some increased moisture to places like Barstow, Bishop, Las Vegas, Lake Havasu, and yeah, so this is going to come across some of the area, and we're going to, we still have some model disagreement on just where the best precipitation amounts are going to uh, line up right now, so we have that to look forward to over the next few days, trying to nail down some of those details a little bit more. I'll show you the latest on that here more in a moment. No lightning strikes last 24 hours, Las Vegas, California. California and portions of Western Arizona lightning free and the Garnet fire is really the only thing ongoing right now that's really noteworthy and you can see it flaring up during the afternoon hours uh, but we got some warmer conditions uh, that are going to occur here over the next couple of days and of course we will have some lightning strikes probably with the remnant moisture of Mario moving across the area and you can also see Mario here on the tropical storm uh, status here on the uh, Central Pacific. This is actually the Eastern Pacific Hurricane Center. You can see you can click on these tabs here. There's Central. This covers uh, off to the west of 140 West Central Pacific. Eastern Pacific is right here along the west coast of Mexico and the Atlantic. You can click there. So you can see we also have additional tropical storm development that is possible here over the next seven days. Now, Mario should be a tropical storm, probably on in through Tuesday afternoon, but we're not looking at this being any kind of a wind threat to Los Angeles or San Diego or the Southwest USA. This is moving over some very cold water. It's going to lose its deep convection, and uh, the remnant moisture is going to be the big story here for California. And you'll be able to see that here on the per uh, percentage of a water uh, anomaly, the percent of no normal here. And there's Mario off to the south of Baja, and then you can kind of see it move up, and then you can see that moist air kind of engulf the state as we go through the upcoming week so that is what we're watching and again some big discrepancy on just what is going to occur with that moisture as it moves back up over the area then you can see perhaps additional tropical cyclone development occur as we go on in through towards the end of the week and on in through next week we'll see how that does as well some of the models are showing the potential of some of that moisture also moving northbound but not very good agreement as of right now and this is the gfs there's mario global forecast system this is the usa model look at that moisture it brings back over the region as we go through thursday night into friday and then the next tropical system also it wants to pull some of that across the area as well as we get a frontal system with pacific cold front kind of moving towards the west coast there as we go through the extended forecast so we'll be watching that closely over the next couple of days now take a look at 80 meter wind speed so there's mario right now it's got some pretty strong winds with it here as we speak but they are around the center there it's not really bringing much in the way of wind towards cabo or any kind of landmass there but it's a fairly strong storm kind of wrapped up their tropical storm as we go through the next day or so and as it moves northbound you can really see how it loses its wind speed here the deep convection just gets you know shredded off this storm it's going to lose it quickly as it moves over the colder water another tropical system will be developing behind it it looks like according to the models there but you can see how mario is really no threat to land with any kind of wind speed or anything like that and then the next system out here that looks a bit stronger that would probably be a hurricane but that looks to also remain out over the open water then it'd be moving over cooler water at this point and then really starting to weaken as it does so now taking a look here at the ocean temperatures you can see why that occurs mario's down here right now you know it's maintaining tropical storm status but once it gets over the cooler waters as it makes its trek northbound it's really going to lose that deep convection this cooler water just cannot maintain tropical systems nearly as well as the warmer water so it'd have to take the perfect track and be a fast moving storm to really get impacts into the state of california as far as winds or anything like that now Check this out. Uh, this is all the way back through summertime. We're now looking through July. You see this tongue of colder water. This is not an anomaly map we're looking at. This is the actual ocean temperature. And so this is La Nina forming. I went all the way back to May. And you can kind of see that cooler tongue coming across the equatorial Pacific Ocean there. This is what is known as La Nina. You notice the green start to extend a little bit further out. We're getting better chances of heading towards La Nina over the next couple of months. And I'll be doing a video on that here over the next few 
few days as well. Kind of got interrupted in that process when the hacking occurred of both channels. Now, taking a look here at the artificial intelligence model on the left versus the European on the right, I want to kind of show you some of the discrepancy coming up. You can see as we go through Thursday, you see some of this precipitation on the artificial intelligence shows it going up some of the central coast towards the Bay Area, some across Southern California, Sierra Nevada, but we have a different set up here on the european where it wants to keep some of that even some heavy amounts between los angeles and san diego and it moves it up across some of the transverse range up towards the sierra nevada much more readily versus the coastal areas here so we do have some auto discrepancy on where uh, the biggest and most precipitation amounts are going to be occurring now, if we look at the ensemble mean, though, on the European, this is the average of all 50 ensemble members. And you can see that it, it does have some up the coastal areas here as well. So that control run looks like it's kind of an anomaly there as far as where the precipitation is going to occur. And just a reminder that we're probably going to get some heavier amounts for some locations, probably going to be a bit more hit and miss um, with this thunderstorm activity here. Yeah, we'll, we'll see how it goes, but you can kind of see it does bring some precipitation to a lot of the state, although most places aren't going to see very heavy amounts. Amount. some isolated locations possibly could and of course the national weather service offices over the last couple of days have been all over this this was updated yesterday afternoon we're going to warm up a bit here again and some fire weather threat is going to be going on plume dominated fire weather thunderstorm chances start to come as we go through tuesday like i mentioned and yeah you guys know all the risks and everything and what to do when thunderstorms start to roll in when thunder roars go, go indoors if you want to be careful now take a look at sacramento valley look at this wednesday probably being the warmest day and then you can kind of see red bluff and redding 98 sacramento 97 degrees and we start to cool down as the clouds really get over the areas we go through thursday friday saturday and sunday uh phoenix nice graphic here from phoenix most abnormal moisture levels here coming up across the region here so you can see portions of arizona and california just kind of giving you an overall look at the map there and nice to see the national weather service offices explaining this quite well this is shower and thunderstorm chances for Thursday. You can see they start to increase and even a port across portions of San Diego, Los Angeles, Irvine, you can see as well. And then across the higher terrain, of course, the chances are going to be a bit better. Now, this is day four. We do have the potential, again, for some flooding with this event coming up, but we need to get the details nailed down a little bit better before we can really zoom in on those threats. And there you go, day four, excessive rainfall outlook. Now, looking at daily two meter maximum temperature, let's scroll through there is Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, we start the cool down. So some pretty warm conditions. You can see even interior portions of Southern California get away from the coastal areas and you're getting up into the mid and upper 90s across Los Angeles and some of San Diego County as well. And the interior valleys are going to be quite warm. Deserts, you know, some areas up over 100 degrees also. And the Bay Area, you can kind of see, of course, a little bit chillier than what is going to be going on across the interior portions. Now, 6 to 10 day temperature outlook, much of the lower 48, including the West Coast above. There's the above normal signal there. Makes sense with what we just saw. And check out the Patreon page if you want to help donate some money. But anyway, um, hope you guys are liking the channel. Click like and subscribe. We will do this all again tomorrow. We'll get some better uh, model data and hopefully my voice will be much better by then as well so anyway i will talk to you guys then